In this video, we're going to talk about the solution of a related rates problem, the one shown in the upper left corner of your screen. This one is about a water tank. It's a right triangular prism, and the dimensions of that right triangular prism are given in the problem. The tank is 12 centimeters wide at the top, so that's this dimension, 20 centimeters tall, and then 4 centimeters deep from front to back, so that's this side here or this side here. So really, this is a right triangular prism whose base is a right triangle with legs of length 12 and 20, and whose height as a prism is four centimeters. We're told the top of the tank is open and water is poured in here at a constant rate of 10 cubic centimeters per second. The question is, how fast is the water level rising? At the moment, the water in the tank is 14 centimeters deep. As with all related rates problems, since we already have a picture and have some idea of what's happening in this problem, our first step is to identify what it is we're supposed to find and what other changing quantities or variables might be in play. So the question is, how fast is the water level changing or water level rising? So we need a name for that. That's a variable. And that variable can be represented in the picture as we could call this H. It's important to keep in mind that H represents the height of the water in the tank, not the height of the tank itself. That is a constant. That is equal to 20 centimeters. So when we talk about a variable H, we're going to be talking about the rising height of the water. What other things might be involved? What other variables? Let's see. Well, there is the fact that 10 cubic centimeters per second are being entered into the tank. That is dV dt, where V represents the volume of water in the tank. So let's write that down. V is the volume of water in the tank. All right, so that's one of our variables is V. And we know something about the rate of change of V or dV dt. We also are interested in H and how fast H is changing because what we want is how fast the water level is rising, that is dH dt. So it seems like what we want to do in this problem is somehow relate V and H in such a way that we could find a relationship between dV dt and dH dt. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can write down a relationship directly between the volume of the water, uh, not the volume of the tank because that's a constant, the volume of the water and the height of the water in the tank. So let's relate V and H. So what is the volume of a right triangular prism? Because we know that not only is the tank a right triangular prism, but also the water itself forms a right triangular prism. Same height or depth, we should say, four centimeters. But the height is something that's variable. And it looks like this width of the top surface is also going to be variable because it's going to get wider as the water reaches the top of the container. Uh, so we have three dimensions, one of which we have a variable name for. This one we don't, and it seems like we might need to. So let's go ahead and take our pen here and give that width also a name. Let's call that W. And that'll be the width of the water. So then can we write down the volume? I just think we were not able to write down the volume entirely in terms of H. We're gonna need other dimensions as well. That V is going to be the area of the right triangular base, that's one half times H times W. That gives the area of this right triangle. And then to get the volume, we multiply that area by how deep this prism is. So that's gonna be one half HW times four centimeters because that is the constant depth of the prism. So that comes out to 2HW, that's V. Now we can go ahead and take the derivative at this point and find out what that looks like. We can take the derivative of each side with respect to T. We'll get dV dt on the left because the derivative of V is just V prime or dV dt. On the right side, thing we have to keep in mind is that we have two times H times W and H and W are both varying with respect to time. That means that we need to use the product rule here because we have a product of two functions, both of which are changing. So that's gonna be two times, and then the derivative of HW is going to be dH dt times W plus H times dW dt. And at this point, we can kind of take stock of where we are. It looks like we know something about dV dt. We wanna know what dH dt is. We don't know yet what W is, although maybe we can find that out we know what H is at the time we want to find dH dt. We don't know so much about dW dt. All right, so at this point, it seems like the thing that's missing is we need some other relationship, some other 
relationship governing H and W. And thankfully, we have the tools we need to get one because we know that this right triangular prism always has a certain proportionality to it. We know that the top of this tank was specified to be 12 centimeters wide and the overall height of the tank was 20 centimeters. That proportion, let me draw that over here, that 12 to 20 proportion is going to be maintained even if we have a smaller triangle sitting inside of this. And that's because these two triangles, the red one and the blue one, are similar. Because they are similar, that means that the ratio of 12 to 20 is going to equal the ratio of W to H. And therefore, we can create a relationship directly between H and W and then use that to help us solve the problem. Uh, we want to know what W is in terms of H. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by H and get W equals 12 twentieths times H, which simplifies to 3 fifths times H. And at this point, we get to make a choice. We can either use this to get a relationship between DWDT and DHDT and therefore replace both this and this, W and DWDT, in this equation with things that are in terms of H. Or we can go back to here, and this is what, actually what I'm going to do, is we can go back to here and replace W with 3 fifths H so that we just have a relationship directly between V and H. That tends, in most cases, to be the easier approach if you can make it happen, and here we can. All right, so since W equals 3 fifths H, we have V equals 2H times 3 fifths H. That'll simplify to V equals 6 fifths H squared. And now we can try again taking the derivative of each side with respect to time. On the left, dV dt. On the right, we get 6 fifths times 2H. And then remember, because H serves as a kind of inside function, we got to multiply by its derivative as well. That's dH dt. All right, scroll up a little bit so we have some room. All right, so at this point, let's just clean up a little bit. We have 12 fifths H times dH dt. And at this point in the problem stem, we were given dV dt. That was 10 cubic centimeters per second. Let me just zoom out so we can see the whole thing at once. There we go. That's better. All right, so we know that dV dt at this particular moment, and really at all times, was 10 cubic centimeters per second. We know that H, at the moment we're interested in, is 14 centimeters. And we are now interested in dH dt. So let's solve for dH dt. dH dt is going to equal dV dt over 12 fifths H. And that's going to be 10 over 12 fifths times 14. And that is equal to 10 over, and then 14 times 12, I think, is going to be 168. So 168 fifths. And then that's going to be 10 times 5 over 168, because dividing by 168 fifths, same as multiplying by 5 over 168. That works out to 50 over 168. Move up a little bit. There we go. 168. which simplifies just a little bit to 25 over 84, whatever that's worth. That feels like such an abstract number. I mean, it's it's a perfectly fine number. It's just I kind of want a numerical estimate for that, like a something in decimal that helps me to see how big that is. So 25 84 is 0.2976. Let's just call that 0 0.298. That's going to be a little bit more space here equals 0 0.298. And then what are the units? The units should be how fast the height is increasing. That's going to be in centimeters per second. One thing you might have noticed if you were paying really close attention was this was in cubic centimeters per second, so centimeters cubed per second. This was in centimeters. This we expect to be in centimeters per second. So we have two instances of centimeters over here. Where was the third one? 